But basically, finding all this out, I think I was 24 weeks pregnant, finding all this out meant a lot. It meant um, that I couldn't have a home birth. So that was one thing my midwife told me. She was telling me all this medical information. I was like, numbers and statistics, trying to like wrap my head around that. And then finally she said, and this means that you can't have a home birth and you can't, you can't see me anymore. And I just burst into tears. Like I was already freaking out and worried about my daughter. And then I found out that I was having to uh, let my birth plan go, um, which was actually really, really, really hard. Um, Okay, I mean, and a lot of people didn't really get it. I mean, I wasn't just saying goodbye to a home birth for this pregnancy. It's like, I will, I will never in my life have a home birth. Um, but yeah, it was re really, really hard for me. I mourned that that loss for a, a while, and yeah, no one really gets that. Um, they're like, oh, you know, big deal. You have to go to the hospital where everyone else has their babies. It's, um, but for me, I, n I never saw myself having having a hospital birth unless it was medically necessary, which is, of course now it was. So I, you know, willingly went along with it. But it was still it was still hard to let that go. So because Oregon law dictates that you know if you have a sensitized pregnancy, you are automatically opted out from an out of hospital birth. I couldn't I couldn't even have um, a birth center birth like I had with Brendan. Um, I got to go. I got to transfer my care to the midwives at the birth center, which was lovely and got to see them at the birth center, um, you know, up until I had her at the hospital. But because of the health risks for her, um, I could not have an out of hospital birth. Um, and so to explain that a little more, um, when my midwife told me that I had a sensitized pregnancy, um, she <laughs> She was she she used the words fetal demise in the conversation, so that freaked me out. Um, basically, because uh, my my the antibodies um, that my body has created attack her red blood cells. Um, babies can develop anemia, um, and then that can lead to swelling in the brain um, and a lot of other complications. Uh, and before. I think it even gets to fetal demise. They just they usually take the babies prematurely um, via emergency C-section or you know scheduled C-section. So a lot of things that I just never thought would happen to me, and that I don't know, a lot of things that I had to wrap my head around. So we actually sat for a whole weekend, just like going over all of these, you know. Um, what ifs in our head like well what if this is happening what like how is she like my own body's attacking my baby like that was that was really hard for me just like thinking like there's nothing I can do about it and I'm supposed to be the safe place for her and my own body is like so um we come to, come to find out after getting my blood drawn again to check where my titer level was at that it was at a one which is the lowest it could be um so most likely it was not affecting her yet which was good so from that point on, we just had to get uh, a blood draw every four to six weeks to check where my titer level was at. Um, we did end up going in for an ultrasound at maternal fetal medicine um, to see the doctors there because they were overseeing my case. I actually, I continued to see my home birth midwife um, for nutritional purposes and then she acted as my doula at the birth and then I saw her for six weeks of postpartum care um, which was lovely. <laughs> um, so I kept seeing her, I was seeing all six of the midwives at um, through the birth center and then I was also being overseen by these doctors at maternal fetal medicine. So anyways went and saw them, had an ultrasound with her to check. There's a blood vessel in the brain um, that they use to determine whether or not the baby's anemic um, and she was not and they checked my titer level again or they got the results at that appointment it was a negative one so he explained the doctor there explained a little better what was going on um, but it's still it was still kind of confusing to us because we were hearing a lot of different things um, throughout the pregnancy um, but we were you know 
closely monitored, blood draws every four to six weeks. We were told if it got to an eight, that they would start monitoring us more closely. And if it got to a 16, that was kind of in the more dangerous range. And they would do, um, I think, weekly ultrasounds uh, to check that blood vessel um, and just monitor her more closely to see if they needed to take her via C-section. So it never got there, thank God. Um, it was out of one, 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 one. Then at my 36 week appointment, it went up to a four. Um, and then the last week that I was due, it was up to an eight. Um, so all of that um, really, I guess, didn't affect this pregnancy much um, besides the fact that um, when I was told all this, like eventually it finally got told to me, like you shouldn't have any more children. Like she will be your last, this is your last pregnancy. 